All right, new to version 070 is ColourPop. And this image here is an example of why we need ColourPop. So the images are mostly color, um, colored by a luminance model. And that luminance model makes this red a gray. And when we have these grayscale images, I'll show you back to the, have a grayscale image that goes from black all the way up to white, that color of red is gonna be right in the middle of that range. And so it's gonna bleed into our clouds and our horizon and places we don't want it to be. Um, so the solution to this is color pop mode. So let me show you how that looks. We're gonna bring it up. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that the flag turned white. And obviously we didn't turn off our red, so that's still in the same area, but the flag turned white. And what does that mean? That means that color pop mode has identified that this flag is color and that the background is black and white. Everything else is black and white. So how do we fix this white flag, which is not what we want. Well, we need to do two things. One, over here on this slider, this is gonna set where the split is between the grayscale and the black and, and the color. Think of color pop as two hue forges stacked on top of each other. One of them is defined as grayscale and one of them is defined as color. And it's not red or, it's mostly I'm picking what's grayscale and then everything else is color. So if I bring this down to halfway, which is kind of where I like to set it, um, you'll still see that this doesn't look like what we want. Well, I have a filament set. You don't have to load this, but I have a filament set to help get you started. This ColourPop regular filament set that's gonna load um, colors and it's gonna look a little, a little weird. So let's talk about why it looks like this. Okay, so you notice that we dragged our slider down to, to 0 0.5. Um, I actually wanna make my min depth 48 and max depth four. Oh, okay. See where this is, it's up here. So this is where our transition point between grayscale and color pop is, which means that our black and white here are too low. So we need to bring the black up, red up as well. And then we need to bring this um, white up to the bottom of the black. And we can adjust our, our base color. Okay, so now you can kind of see the basics of color pop. Let's talk about tolerance and extra gap. These are important sliders, but people, often when they first start, use them very, very wrongly because um, they seem to get better results by dragging. Like if you drag this tolerance over, you seem to get better results, but um, that's not what you wanna do. Okay, so tolerance, what is that? Tolerance is um, how different the pixel values can be in the gray filament, the grayscale filament, black, white, gray, um, or the grayscale color part of the image will still be considering be con and still be considered grayscale. So, the default is eight, that's a low value. Um, if your image is not actually grayscale, if it's a photograph that's been edited and maybe it's been edited and color shifted a little bit to the green or a little bit to the, the brown or the yellow to enhance the uh, pop, then you might need to drag this up a little bit. Um, but the goal for tolerance is the least you can possibly get away from, away with. In some images, um, there might be a brown cast or a blue cast again, and you may need to drag it up. 20 is, if you really need to drag it up, around 20 is about as much as you normally want to do, except in very specific circumstances. You can go higher. I do have some images that look great with a 70, but you need very, very specific situations for that to work. Extra gap. Extra gap um, separates our layers. So when we, when, these, when we have this transition here, it's going from white to black. And if we're down at 0 0.04 millimeter layer heights, which is what I like to run at, that transition could be one layer. And at one layer, so that black is a gray now, it's not black. I can't get it to be black, right? So um, I need to have a little bit of separation between the black and the white. So that's what these extra layers are. But be careful because remember, this is two hue forges stacked on top of each other. And there's only a limited amount of room for each half of the hue forge. And so when you increase this extra gap, which is gonna give you extra room in between um, these, this transition, it's gonna give you more room before you get to the black, but, but still separate everything to black and white, um, it's taking layers away from each side. So you're losing a little bit here and you're losing a little bit here, okay? So you have to be careful about that. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out how to separate the color zone. So one of the things that happens here, and this is something I will address in the beta, but currently your zones are, uh, you've seen the full range. We've used full range um, for a long time. And what it does is says, if I never get to a true black or I never get to a true white, expand my luminance range to cover that whole area and give me more room to work. So 
because otherwise you just you either have much shorter meshes than you want and you can't get as much blending as you want or you get um you just get a muted tone so when you full range it which is what we most do most of the time you get that full extent to work with um however in these contexts it's been split but the full range is being applied across the entire mesh and i want to split it to apply full range to the grayscale and full range to the color and that will happen um, in the beta before the public release but there's a couple ways you can deal with the fact that we're never really getting to the bright red that's in the flag here we can put in a new red and i really like this wine red from polymaker for this it's a bright color and it um it can really um enhance our effect but you see i'm i'm dragging down um my base red but the bright red's barely showing up like i need to use this base red to blend off the black and get a nice dark nice shading and shadowing here but i drag it down and i'm just not seeing you know that red come in until the very bottom the way to address this is to change your brightness compensation and the brightness compensations now have graphs that show you how what they look like how they work um this is a new thing in viewport i will say that this one the Bright Enhance 5 is often a very useful um, tool for this. So let's look at what happened. Now, first, you see that the divider moved. You change Bright Enhancement modes, the dividers move. So let's bring that back down. So our split is now in the middle. Now, notice I'm now way down on this slider here, but that's because it grows very quickly. So we want to put it somewhere near the middle, but still be um, you know, on the slider here. So we'll put it in the middle here. Um, we can now bring this white up black up bring these and we now have more detail available in this black zone now we might even want to go lower because we have enough detail um down here that we don't really need to be that high we can now we have more room so now you can see as i adjust this we're getting more result from the red on top now what's interesting though is that this white is not really doing anything we're not still not seeing the white because it's not really in full range so instead of leaving that white there, let's just get rid of it and run red to the top. There's no reason we can't just choose to run red to the top. And then you notice that when I move one layer, even at 0 0.04, I'm getting a huge variation um, in, the, in the color. And so that's pretty strong. We don't really want that. So this is where the power slider is fantastic because I can go to fine. I can drag it and I can get very, very fine adjustment to the overall color. I'm very very small this is the the tightest adjustment you can do um it's the smallest increment of adjustment you can do in hue forge and so this is an extremely useful tool but the issue here is that i have greatly expanded the space on the bottom here like i've hugely expanded how much black and white space there is and i don't really need that much space so going through all of these i happen to know that the cosine enhance one at regular power level is going to just squish the top and that's our issue right is that our top is not really being used it's just basically everything over here is going to be treated as if it's over here now remember this icon um if you've watched my previous video which i'll put a card up for that this icon goes right to left is the luminance value however it's calculated in this case calculated with color pop and the bottom to top is the vertical height of the mesh Let's bring up our split because it got dragged down from the previous one and um, black down. And you see here that now we're seeing a flag that has a lot more of the details that we want, a lot more of the um, of the color we want, and really gives us a great effect. And again, you can fine tune it by adjusting it. But because we're using this very particular cosine enhance, you see we've effectively thrown out the very, very right hand side of the luminance curve. And we know that we're not getting it. It's not showing up in our image. So for now, this is a good workaround. As I said, I will expand. Um, I will expand it so that um, the um, I will expand it so that the, um, the the full range is applied to both halves. But for now, this is a good workaround, um, especially um, in terms of which you know, which side you want to put detail into. Um, we could probably even bring the split up a little bit. So in any case, that those are ways you can play. You can also invert a color pop, and that just basically means put the color on the bottom or put the color on the top. In this case, the color being on the top makes the most sense. The flag is in the foreground. Everything else is in the background. One last thing to really consider is, do you want your background to be grayscale? 
it doesn't need to be grayscale. Your background can be any color you want it to be, and it just fits within the grayscale. So for instance, we might want to say, well, it's blue sky. We want to see blue sky and, and make it blue. Um, might bring back, bring the blue in. Um, maybe we even want a couple of colors of blue because um, you know, just one is not enough. We want a, a lighter color, maybe, maybe this ice. Um, give us a tint on the sky. And there, now we have a red flag in front of a blue sky that looks very much like the source image, except the source image has a gray background. Now, obviously, we can turn off the blues and go to the grayscale if we'd rather. And then also, once we're done with this, we can reorder all of our sliders and make it much easier to look at what's... Um, okay, so that is the basics of um, ColourPop. There are some known issues that the ranges within each section are not full range, and I will be fixing that over the course of the beta. But the basic idea is two hue forges stacked on top of each other. You pick the orientation, the let the uh, overall top, which colors on the top, which colors on the bottom, and think about that carefully. And then we have our um, our gap, extra gap. Remember the extra gap. Use as sparingly as you can, and tolerance the same way. Use the tolerance as sparingly as you can. And consider ways to use ColourPop to solve difficult images. For instance, it would be very easy to desaturate the green using a tool like GIMP uh, from an image. Desaturate that green down to grayscale and have a flower in there. And then maybe that flower is red and red and green are very much in the same luminance band. So if you desaturate the green out, um, it's a black and white, basically a luminance image of that green where the darks are dark green and the lights are light green and then have your flower on top, and then you'd be able to bring it in and have the green leaves and the red flower, and it would be a, you know, look almost exactly like the original image, which would have been very difficult without Hue Forge. So think about ColourPop, not just for black and white with ColourPop on it, but also for color images um, that might be hard to do with other Hue Forge. Hope this is helpful in getting you started with ColourPop, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create. And I think it might be a little misleading to not at least try the title card image in ColourPop mode. Here it is. I like it. There's some things I could adjust or change, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and I even added this blue here because I like it with this little blue cast to the to the um, shadows. It almost doesn't even seem perceptible as blue, but I like what it adds to the scene versus not having it. So there you go. This is ColourPop for the um, title card image. Hopefully this gives you some ideas for your own stuff.